Welcome to Pulverizer's Guide to Warrior Tanking. This is my third installment and the tips and strategies within are updated as of patch 4.0.3a. In this guide we'll be going over the proper talent specialization for a warrior tank, useful glyphs for that spec, important stats for your class, and how to properly tank AOE and single target fights. First off we'll go over a few must have talents for tanking and cataclysm. To start off you must choose protection as your specialization. This will unlock Sentinel, Vengeance, and Critical Block abilities, and allow you to begin putting talent points into the protection tree. There are a few must-have talents, and a few more you can take depending on your role in a raid. First I'll be going over the ones you must have. To begin, take Toughness for extra armor. Next shield specialization will help you generate much needed rage. This talent also encourages you to use your shield reflect whenever possible. Take Shield Mastery for shorter defensive cooldowns, Hold the Line will increase your critical block, and will be one of the main reasons you'll prefer parry over dodge. I'll go over that a little later. Last Stands is a no-brainer, a great one-point defensive cooldown. Concussion Blow is a very good stun and can sometimes be used to interrupt, well worth one talent point. Bastion of Defense makes you uncritable to most PvE creatures. As a side note, creatures can still crit you if the enemy is buffed by a mind control target such as a Feral Druid, but it's rare. This talent is definitely necessary. Warbringer is very useful and one of the main reasons warriors are the most mobile tanks in the game. Improved Revenge is very useful and well worth 2 points. Devastate is one of our core abilities that stacks Sunders and triggers Sword and Board, which is the next must-have talent. Sword and Board refreshes the cooldown of your Shield Slam and makes it cost no rage. Shockwave is a great AoE tanking tool but is also a stun. Grab this, it's a good one. Field Dressing in the Arms Tree is also a must-have. You're a tank, you're going to be healed. You might as well help the healers out with an extra 6% healing on yourself. It also increases the healing done by your Enrage Regeneration and Victory Rush. So those are the necessary talents for tanking. You'll have several points left over to fill in where you see fit based on your playstyle. That being said, let's go over some talents that I have found very useful to spend those extra talent points on. Blood and Thunder is a good one to have unless you're only going to be tanking single targets. I found myself taking this in every build. Gag Order is nice for silence and casters on a pool, and the reduced cooldown on Heroic Throw is pretty sweet. This isn't a must-have talent, however. Impending Victory is situational at best. It has a chance to proc on Devastate, but only heals you for 5% of your health pool if the mob is below 20%. Could be good if the boss has a nasty enrage for the last 20% of his life, but the benefit seems marginal at best. Thunderstruck is nice for AoE tanking because it buffs your main AoE abilities. Vigilance is a mediocre talent. If you drop a point here, throw the ability on the second tank in the raid. It'll buff your personal DPS slightly when not taking damage yourself. And the taunt refresh is good in certain situations. Heavy repercussions is nice for threat, and who doesn't like to see huge shield slam crits? Take this one if you have the two talent points to spare. Piercing Hell on the Fury Tree also has its uses for kiting, but this is another situational talent. Insight, War Academy, and Deep Wounds all have their obvious benefits for threat. You can take any or all if you have the talent points to spare. Now let's talk about your glyphs. Glyphs are pretty straightforward. For your prime glyphs you use Shield Slam, Revenge, and Devastate. These are your only options. Major glyphs have a few more options depending on your role. Some good all around glyphs are Resonating Power, so your Thunderclap costs less rage, Glyph of Thunderclap, so your Thunderclap's radius is larger, and unless you're only doing single target tanking, Cleave is a good one to have. Long Charge, Rapid Charge, Spell Reflection, Sunder Armor, and Intervene are also good choices if it suits the fight. For minor glyphs you have a few options, nothing here is going to make or break you. I like Demoralizing Shout, Intimidating Shout, and Glyph of Command. Now that you have your talents and glyphs set up, let's review some of the Warrior Tank's most useful stats. For Survival you'll be prioritizing Stamina, Mastery, Parry, and Dodge in that order. Stamina is your best stat and will help you survive big hits and massive spell damage which are present in some of Cataclysm's raids and dungeons. However, unlike Wrath of the Lich King, tanks are rarely in danger of being two shot. Since healer mana is such a big concern now, Mastery will help you smooth out incoming damage by either blocking for 30% or if it's a critical block you'll block for 60% reduced physical damage. Parry and dodge share the same avoidance percentage per point now, but you'll want to prioritize parry because of the hold the line talent, which increases your critical block chance. Armor is still a very useful stat, but at the moment is not present on much gear in excess. The majority of all pieces of the same eye level share the same amount of armor. Now for threat you'll be prioritizing expertise and hit. Expertise will be your best threat stat, up to 26 expertise. 
Try and reach this number without sacrificing too many defensive stats, but don't worry if you go over, it's still good even after the soft cap at 26. It is not as good for threat as expertise, but if you're required to interrupt a boss's ability, you'll need 8% hit to reach the cap. After the cap, however, hit is useless. Reforging is a great tool Blizzard added in a Cataclysm. It allows you to take one of the stats on a piece of gear and reforge it into another stat. Just keep in mind what stats are most useful and you should be set. Stamina cannot be reforged, but you can, for example, reforge dodge into mastery or excess hit into expertise. Now that we got our gear set, let's charge shield first into some tanking. The most common type of pull in the game is an AoE pull. Despite Blizzard trying to make AoE pulls less frequent, they are still a very big part of the game. Warriors have very good control over groups of multiple mobs if executed properly. The following AoE strategy is going to assume you have Blood and Thunder talent in the first tier of the protection tree. To start out an AoE pull, charge into the group and immediately hit Rend, followed by Thunderclap. This will affect all targets with Rend, producing a steady stream of damage and threat. The next ability you will use is Shockwave. This is a great AoE threat move and will also stun all mobs in front of you, producing some upfront damage and avoidance. At this point it will become an ability priority system for tanking. The priority for AoE pulls is Thunderclap first, Shockwave, Revenge, and Shield Slam. Cleave is now usable every 3 seconds, does not trigger the global cooldown, and hits up to 3 targets like a truck. Use this whenever your rage allows, but make sure you leave yourself with enough rage to hit your normal abilities. Now don't neglect your other abilities on AoE pulls. Shield Block will help in between Shockwave stuns to reduce damage. Spell Reflection has a short 7 second cooldown. Spam this whenever you're fighting spellcasters. Use Shield Bash to interrupt and Concussion Blow to stun. And don't be afraid to use defensive cooldowns like Shield Wall, Last Stand, or Enrage Regeneration if things get dicey. So you're through some AoE packs and it's time to tank a boss. Before you start the pull though, you want to make sure your group is ready. This includes making sure your group members are present, available buffs are up, and your healer's mana is topped off. We will go over the process for starting the pull in a second, but before we do that I want to go over what is expected of you during a boss encounter. When you pull, you will want to make sure you move the boss into position as quickly as possible so your raid can get into their positions. At this point you are in control of the boss. You have to react quickly to changes during the course of the fight. This includes but it's not limited to moving the boss out of the bad stuff, into the good stuff, and leaving your raids, DPS, and healers enough room to do their thing. During movement fights, keep track of your healers and make sure you don't go out of their range. Communication is also very important. Vent is recommended for any serious tank. Now that we have that out of the way, let's start a pull. Begin with your battle or commanding shout for some upfront rage, and heroic throw the boss. When the boss is moving towards you, close the distance with charge and immediately open up with a shield slam. From here it's another priority system. The list is shield slam, revenge, rend, and devastate. Rend only has priority over devastate if all three sunders are applied and you don't currently have a rend on the target. Heroic strike is like cleave in the fact that you can use it every three seconds off the global cooldown, but it hits one target very hard. Use heroic strike whenever you can to burn off excess rage. You can also rotate your longer cooldown abilities like Shockwave if Shield Slam and Revenge are on cooldown. Also, as early in the fight as you can muster without risking losing aggro to greedy DPS, put up your Thunderclap and Demoralizing Shout debuffs, and keep them up throughout the fight. Another very useful ability that Warriors have acquired with Cataclysm is Inner Rage. If you find yourself frequently over 75 Rage, you can trigger this ability for an increased 15% damage. Be careful though because this increases the rage cost of all your abilities by 50% and it lasts 15 seconds. So either make sure you will continue to generate a lot of rage over that time or have a cancel aura macro handy. The last thing I want to go over in this guide is mobility. Warriors have many tools that are unique to the class such as intervene and heroically. We also have charge and intercept. With all these abilities we can get from place to place very quickly, helping us get out of bad stuff with speed or quickly picking up loose ads. Familiarize yourself with these abilities and look for unique ways to use them during encounters. It adds a lot of depth to the class and it's a lot of fun. So there you have it, we're at the end of the guide. 
We've gone over the basics that every warrior tank needs to know, but the best way to improve your tanking is going out there and playing the game. As time goes on, new trends will emerge and you'll have to learn to adapt to these changes. If you're interested in keeping up with the latest news on Warriors, you can always visit your favorite World of Warcraft fan site such as MMO Champion or Tank Spot and browse the Warrior forums there. Good luck and happy tanking.